Hi, I'm Virginia from Wright Clinic, and here with me today is Claudia, Director of Medical Accuracy at Flow App. Thank you so much for joining me today, Claudia. Thank you for having me, Virginia. It's a pleasure. So let's start with what do you do? So as Director of Medical Accuracy at Flow, which is a women's health app and period tracker, I basically manage a team of doctors to review all the medical content that you'll see inside the app and outside the app. So that's all the articles, all the stories. It's also um, lots of new features that we build. And on top of that, outside of the app is what we put on our website, our PR, our marketing, our onboarding, our user acquisitions. Uh, so just making sure that everything is as medically accurate and credible as possible. Wow, that's amazing. So how did you get into that? Well, it was a bit of a roundabout way. I started off as a GP and I was enjoying general practice. I was really enjoying women's health in particular, but I also really loved public health and health promotion. And then on the side, I was constantly doing either social media stuff or writing or marketing something, creating a little course. I always really loved doing something health promotional and creative. So I was doing that around the side and I got spotted, I think, via LinkedIn and on Instagram and various social media platforms by a recruiter for Babylon Health. I then worked at Babylon Health for a while, worked in their marketing department. And because I built up that experience and built up a profile on LinkedIn, I then was approached by a recruiter at Flow who uh, invited me to interview for a medical advisor position. And then I worked there for a year or so and then I was promoted to the director role. Wow, that is such an amazing journey. And I love that you were, you know, naturally creative to start off with. And then you built up your LinkedIn profile, you went and got that experience in, in marketing. And now, um, you know, you're the head honcho at the Flow app. <laughs> so, um, so what do you know now that you wish? <laughs> Near you, she will see. <laughs> Not the head honcho. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take my chances. <laughs> so, so what do you know now that you wish you knew earlier? Um, as a doctor that transitioned out of clinical work, I no longer do any clinical work. I wish that I had known that I could still feel super happy and super fulfilled and really feel like I'm making a difference in a role that isn't clinical. And I spent, I would say quite a few years doing the stuff I really loved around my day job. And it's really nice actually now to see that I can do what I really love as part of my day job. It's still very fulfilling despite not having the, the patient, you know, the classic patient one-to-one -one care in a clinic. So I wish I'd known that um, earlier because perhaps I would have had the confidence to pursue what I'm doing now earlier. Yeah, I love that because I think, there is a lot of fear in doing something different that you, you know, quote unquote, weren't really trained to do. And so you have to accept that there's going to be a little a learning curve there. So it's, you know, it's, it's a brave thing to do, but also it's, it's um, one of those things where when you kind of embrace discomfort, then you get all of the rewards afterwards once you kind of climb that hill. So I love that. Yeah. And so what would be your top tips for people who want to do what you're doing and switch from a traditional clinical role into a kind of non-clinical role, um, such as writing and content creation? My tips really are always to just start creating, just start creating, even if it's not going to be making you money straight away, if it's not going to be your day job straight away. I think most people who are creative just want to do that anyway. It's like, it's like downtime. It's almost like a, a release. So just start creating. And you might be surprised because the more you get out there, the more people notice you. The more you're out there, you might connect with people. And I'm a big believer in building a personal brand, whether it be on LinkedIn, whether it be on Instagram, and just being confident enough to put whatever you're interested in out there. It's a great way of people knowing what you love, connecting with people who are like-minded and eventually potentially getting into that non-clinical role that actually you'd really enjoy and you'd love to do. Yeah, I think that's great. Putting yourself out there is so important because 
I think we tend to be afraid of what people will think and we feel like in our own heads you know I'm doing something that's so different I'm going to be judged and oh who's going to see this and what are they going to think and it's so important to kind of just go for it and then you never know who's going to see you see your stuff and then what they're going to think of it they could think it's amazing then offer you a job like you did you know with with the flow app you know recruiters are constantly looking for people who are doing things that are different and so what would you say kind of are your best tips for being on camera because you made some videos as part of your content creation and they're really fun and engaging so what got you in front of the camera and what was it like you know to make your third first video and then how does it feel like as a contrast now yeah well I just I really like it I didn't have to force myself to do it <laughs> I really love it and I remember <laughs> so awkward about the fact I was almost ashamed that I like performing I like the idea of people watching me it's and even saying that now it makes me feel like comfortable but I just I find it easier to be honest over time but always where even as a child I love taking part in dance competitions and that means people watching you and marking you or piano recitals or whatever I I really enjoy performing so when I realized that I could do that together with health, with you know, spreading good quality health information in a nice, approachable way. I thought, you know what? Let's just let's just give this a go. Let's just try it out because it marries something that I really enjoy doing and get a kick out of um, with the health stuff that I've learned a lot about and that I think I could make a difference by sharing it. And um, and what I try hardest is to make sure that it's as relatable as possible. And this is feedback that I got as a clinician, always my uh, my highest marks in OSCEs or in patient feedback or anything like that was always about the way I explained things to people and how I made them feel. And I thought, well, if I can use that on camera to reach more people with this health information, then why not? Let's give it a go. And then the more I tried it, the more awkward positions I put myself in, like on live television, that's the most frightening in the whole entire world. But still having that feeling afterwards and feeling really great and, you know, full of like really buzzy and really excited made me think, okay, I do like doing this. Let's keep going. It's worth it. Let's keep going. I really like that. I love that your confidence has kind of built up over the years and, and you've got over the the shame of liking something of, of people watching you. I think that's so interesting. That's such an interesting point. And um, it's also very encouraging to see, you know, even despite all of those feelings, you carried on anyway um, and you just grew and grew. And I love that. It's it's very inspiring. And so for our final question to to wrap up, what's next on the horizon for you? It's a very good question. I'm that person that when people ask me, what's your five-year plan? I Sorry about the buzz. Do you want me to record again? Do you want me to start again so you don't have the boop, boop, boop? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. Keep going. I, I, can, I can cut that a little bit out. So, so yeah, what's next on the horizon for you? <laughs> I'm that person that when people ask me, what is uh, your five-year plan? What's your 10-year plan? I don't have one and I'm no longer ashamed to admit that. That doesn't mean that there aren't things that I would love to achieve and that I think about and aspire to in the future. Like I would love to marry marketing and public health and health promotion together and take the best bits and the most sticky bits of marketing and apply them to, to health and health information. That's true. How I'm going to do that I don't know. And what I've realized over the years is that very often just doing what I enjoy creates opportunities and doing what I enjoy and sharing it creates opportunities. So five year plan, don't know. Ten year plan, don't know. What's next? I don't know. But I hope it continues to be something in the health information um, domain in this kind of way. Amazing. So we definitely need more health professionals that are creating content that's engaging and accurate. So I think one of the things that uh, draws me to you is your role of being a you know accuracy checker for medical information. And you do know to, you do need to have a healthcare background to um, kind of disseminate that information. 
and I love that you have a creative side as well and you've you know got through these challenges and you're and you're sharing your journey along the way so other people could kind of feel inspired and and start too so that's really lovely and it's just been amazing to speak with you today so thank thank you you so so much (laughs) and I will catch you at the next episode I'll leave any links um in the description below if there's anything you'd like to share with the audience and I'll see you next time bye